Okay, so this is the final supplement for the AP Physics 1 exam review for kinematics. And I mean, after that last one, if you guys saw the medium difficulty question, I'm not sure if this one will beat it, but this is one that deals with projectiles and I think is pretty interesting. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So a tennis player hits a ball two meters above the ground. The ball leaves his racket with a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of five degrees above the horizontal. The horizontal distance to the net is 7 meters, and the net is 1 meter high. Does the ball clear the net? If so, by how much? If not, by how much does he miss? So let's just draw a diagram. So we have a little guy here. So we have this guy, and he is hitting a tennis ball with his racket. All right, so he hits this ball, and this ball is 2 meters above the ground. Not a great diet here. And this is the ground. And it leaves the ground. Or not leaves the ground. Leaves his racket. That arrow is not straight at all. So he leaves his racket at 20 meters per second. And the angle it makes with the horizontal is 5 degrees. So I'm just going to call that theta and label it here. 5 degrees. And the distance from the ball to the net horizontally is 7 meters, and the net itself is 1 meter in, in height. All right, now we have the situation drawn. Let's actually get to solving it. So uh, the first thing I want to do is break that velocity, right? Break that initial velocity into its components. So initial velocity for y, using trig, we can just find that. Actually, no, I should write this out. So using trig, you know, the sine of 5 would be opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite here would be the initial velocity for y and the initial velocity for x. So initial velocity for y above and then 20 below. And so we just multiply 20 and we find that 20 times sine 5 equals the initial velocity in the y direction. And we can do the same thing with trig for the x direction. So we have sine Oop, not sine. We have cosine 5 equals initial velocity in the x over 20. And we can do the same thing here. 20 times sine 5. Why do I keep writing sine? Cosine 5 is equivalent to the initial velocity in the x direction. So what I'm actually going to do is just box those in so we don't... Uh, we don't lose those. And so now we need to actually solve the problem. So the first thing I want to do is find how long it takes to travel that seven meters. So we don't actually know if the ball is going to make it over the net, right? The net is one meter tall. So um, I just want to find the time it takes because time is the link between the X and Y direction. And so if you find the time it takes, then we can calculate the actual height the ball reaches. So what we can do is draw our X and Y diagram thing, whatever you want to call it. I'll just scooch down here and label everything we know. So we know what we just calculated, the initial velocities in each of the directions. And I'll just leave these in their pure form um, so we can maintain for rounding errors. 29 sine 5. All right, so the acceleration for the x direction is just 0 after, re after it leaves the racket. The acceleration for the y would be a projectile, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The initial position for x would just be 0. Initial position for y, it was 2 meters off the ground, the ball. Uh, final position for y would be 0. Uh, for x, it would be unknown, and we don't know the final velocities either. So the displacement here for y would be negative 2 meters. Alrighty, so what we need to do now is set up one of our equations to find time. And I think an interesting thing here is if we were to use this equation, let's say um, change in y equals v o y t plus one half a t squared. 
So technically, you could use this equation, but because you have a uh, value for the acceleration in the y direction, what you're gonna get is a quadratic uh, equation and quadratic function, which is gonna be kind of annoying to solve. So let's just not use the y direction and look at the x direction because the x direction doesn't have acceleration. So that means we can set up as change in x equals the initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half and then the acceleration t squared. But this entire thing is going to be zero because in the x direction, the acceleration is zero. So now we're just left with this. So now we're going to find the time. And the change in x is just seven meters, right? Because you want to find the amount of time it takes for that ball to travel seven meters in horizontal distance. So our change in x is seven meters equals the initial uh, velocity in the x direction, which is 20 times cosine. 5t. So now, now we can just do 7 divided by 20 times cosine 5 and we get a value of around 0 0.35 seconds. All right so now we have the time and the time links um, the x and y direction so time equals 0 0.35 seconds. So we now we know that z exactly 0 0.35 seconds um, the ball is going to be in line with that net. Now, the question is, is it over the net or did it go into the net? And this is where we want to find the height. All right, so now we want to use the y direction. So I'm going to switch colors. Let's use, hmm, let's use yellow. And now we can just use the other equation. Now we can use this, this one that we abandoned here because we were too scared to use a quadratic function. But now that we have the values for time, we can actually solve it. Um, so let's just leave it as y equals initial y plus, oops, plus initial velocity in the y times t plus one half acceleration in the y times t squared. So the reason I left this as well, uh, y equals initial y position instead of just change in y is because then I know the final position. I know my initial position was two meters, right? We're taking this back to the lens of the initial situation. So what you're finding is the final position and the initial position is two plus, and then we have the initial velocity in the y direction which up there says 20 times sine, what is that five? Should be, yep, five. And then multiply this by the time. Time is 0 0.35. Now we wanna add this other part, one half, acceleration in the y, and time squared. And doing all this would give us a final position value equivalent to a 2.00757 meters. So this is the final position, all right? So this is the final height or the final Y position of the ball at 0 0.35 seconds when it is right in line with the net. And the net, it said, was one meter high. So it said it was one meter high. And so it does clear the net, pretty easily actually. And we can just do around two, let's just, let's just call this two meters, minus one meter. It clears it by a grand total of one meter. So yeah, that does it for this video.